It's time for WWE Proving Grounds Mega Pro 2023. And Jonathan Hudson is coming to the ring right now. Vic Foley, and this wasn't a scheduled interview. I'm not sure what's going on, but again, anything can happen here at WWE Proving Ground. And apparently, Jonathan Hudson has something to say. How's everyone doing? So tonight, Jonathan Hudson's in a match against Andy Mack, loser of his wants to talk. Apparently he just wants to talk. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. Why would you not believe Andy Mack? Look, I don't trust either one of these guys exactly not get started right here. I mean, these guys hate each other's guts. After all, they've got a loser leaves town match here later tonight. The loser will never wrestle in WWE Proving Ground again. And here the two guys are in the ring together. Literally anything can happen here. Uh, I bet he's been thinking a lot of probably about how Hudson's going to kick his rear yeah, end and I think slow and Sean Davis let the man talk. I realize that you're just a pawn in Rick Thames' game to try to suppress Oh, oh that's true. wait a minute here. You're good enough to taking do that. shots at Commissioner this Rick Thames. This is what he's done to Stephen Frick and, and when I think about my actions think, and, and to be honest I've been talked to by my wife about this. I, yes I'm a married man I know you are too John. We have that in common. And because we're both married men, I don't think that we have to have a match tonight that's going to threaten anybody's livelihoods. Yeah. It's, all I want is to be recognized as a man of the talent. You are a man of the talent tonight. We have a chance to have a great competitive May of that match what without threatening anybody's livelihood or um, a or anything like that. You know, you know, I like that idea, like that idea so Sean. Sean. No, 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 no. I don't trust him for a second here. I know Jonathan Hudson doesn't either. One, don't you ever mention my wife again. Oh, I, that I probably would listen to him on that you one. Have kids? No, John, I don't have any kids yet. Well, I do. I got two little girls at home, and if someone's trying to take my livelihood, if someone is trying to take food off Oh, my I knew things were going to get crazy here, Rick Sloan. Wait a minute, what's going on now? Oh, wait a minute! Cheap right. shot by Andy Mack! Out Stephen Frick is! He just distracted Jonathan Hudson! They're going after the, in the knee that they injured last week! And I knew there was some sort of ploy here by star of the show Andy Mack and Stephen Frick! They injured Jonathan Hudson's knee last week! And then this blatant, this cheap shot right here! Obviously, to try to gain some sort of advantage in the match later. Well, this is ridiculous, Vic Slohan. Come on now. It's absolutely genius, and it's just another step to the end of the Jonathan Hudson career here at WWN Proving Ground. Well, you know, I tell you right now, I don't care if he's got one leg or two legs. 
I wouldn't want to be in the ring with Jonathan Hudson for nothing later on tonight. Right, Vic Slohan, we're getting ready for the first match tonight of Mega Bro 2023. 20 pounds, he is the mastermind, You couldn't have said it any better, Sean Davis. Mega Bro 2023, and we got the mastermind, Jay Scott, coming out. One of my favorite wrestlers here in Proving Ground. And he's back on the winning way. He's back on the way to the top of the ladder. He's looking good. He's looking confident. And I like where this is going for the Mastermind. Well, Jay Sky had a big win last week in a three-way match over Aries Perez and Awesome Adam Vale. But he's taking on one of the top young contenders here at WWE Proven Ground. And someone that has his eyes set on becoming Winning the Young Lions Cup that's happening in two weeks right here at WWF Proving Rounds. Well, this kid has certainly been rocking up the ladder himself. He's been in so many types of matches six-man tag team singles, and lately he has really been excelling at the singles department. Young Lions Cup, huh, Sean Yeah, Davis? the Young, Young Lions Cup is gonna be in two weeks, and it's gonna be some of the best young talent here at WWF Proving Ground in a one-night tournament to crown the 2023 Young Lions champion. Last year, Tom Felix became the first Young Lions Cup winner and we're gonna see what happens this year. And it's something that I'm really excited about. And I know the competitors here at WWE Improvement Ground, they know that winning that cup means so much for their rankings here, for the various, especially for the cruiserweight title or for the heavyweight title, because honestly, this isn't a weight division thing. It's that anybody that's a young athlete in the middle. Whoa, a little collision there in the ring right here in the middle. Damien goes, a little bit of a crisscross. Oh, and Damien goes down hard by Jay Sky. Well, that's the thing about Damien Gemini. Tonight, he has to worry about what's right in front of him, and that is the mastermind. This is a very big match for this young man, and the mastermind right now seems to have quite an advantage while it's about to say Gemini on his feet. Nice counter by Gemini, another one. He has him there, slaps him hard. Climbing the ladder of the rope, walking the top rope. How impressive. Into that Harakarana takes Jay Sky over. Let's see how he can follow up. Comes in, running clothesline in the corner. And then that rolling maneuver into the Enziguri goes for a count, one and a half count only. So one thing about Damian Gemini I like, he has been getting a lot quicker in between moves. He's not always pandering to the crowd, he's going directly to the next move. Oh, what a suplex maneuver there by Jay Sky. Damian Gemini could have broken his neck on that move. I think so. Slow hands. That's a very dangerous situation. Jay Sky couldn't put him away right here, but no, Damian Gemini, there is no, I'll tell you right now, there is no quit in this kid. We've seen him take on so many more experienced and bigger athletes. He is never afraid. He gets in that ring. I mean, there's just, there's no fear and no quit in him at all. But right now, it is all Jay Sky. There's no fear in those, there's no quit, but I'll tell you, you should have a manager out there because I don't think I would have had him sign a match against this man right here, Jay Sky, the mastermind. And that's the thing about the mastermind. It's not just being complicated in your game plan. Sometimes it's just being direct, being blunt, seeing the opportunity and striking. Well, that's what it's all about here. Every match is so important for all of these athletes here on Proving Ground. You know, the eyes of the wrestling world are on right here on the WWN Pro Wrestling Training Center in Port Ritchie, Florida 
fans and industry insiders around the world watching this right now. Somersault move in the corner by Jay Sky. Wow, full impact. Wow. Using the full force of them boots right there on the top of the head of, Dem of uh, poor Damian Gemini. He's going to go for the cover, and you're right. Let's say if he gets a three, no. So many people are watching this here on Proving Ground. They they write in a lot. A lot of folks say that Vic Slohan, he's awesome the way he calls yeah, matches with Sean I haven't, I haven't heard any, anything about that, Vic Slohan. And I've heard some complaints about uh, yeah. Complaints? Well, we'll get into that. But. Well, the complaints I see right now is Damian Gemini just screaming in pain. That neck vice there by Jay Sky, the mastermind. The Notice earlier, he's keeping the kid grounded. Well, earlier in the match, Damian Gemini basically landed on his head one of the first moves of the match. And now Jay Sky just wrenching away on it. But Damian Gemini is fighting back. So Jay Sky cut him off again here. You notice a lot of the offense, you're right, going right to the head, going to the neck, just injuring those trapezes muscles, but also oh. just discombobulating the young Damian Gemini. Look at that, that right cross to the jaw. That's it, Gemini, Damian Gemini blocks it, gets some punches of his own in there. This guy pushes him off, misses with the clothesline. Oh, a collision in the middle, but looks like Damian Gemini might have the advantage here, goes in. It comes up with a flying knee to the face. Sabat kick brings Jay Sky down. I wouldn't be doing that, I'd be keeping on your opponent. He's been able to get out of this situation using those quick strikes, quick maneuvers. Now he's going to the top rope, but he might be giving Jay Sky. Taking Jay's, a long time yeah. here, Big Soul Man. Might be giving Jay Taking Sky a an long opening. time. Comes down. Frog splash. Looks like he hit it. Goes for the pin, this is it, this is over. No, not quite. Was so close, so close. Many of the fans here thought that the match was over, Vic Slohan. I had to admit, I thought it was too. Now he's gonna go back to the ropes again. Oh, this might be a classic case of going to the well one too many times, Vic Slohan. Damian Gemini is up cross body, but Jay Sky catches them, has them up, and brings them down hard with a power bomb. Oh, Damian Gemini somehow kicks out, but then the Savat kick. Jay Sky hooks the arm and brings him down face first. This one's gonna be over, Vic Sohan. And it is Jay Sky with a giant win. Well, that's the thing about the mastermind. He was reeling, he was in a lot of trouble, but when he saw that advantage, he saw the opportunity, he seized on it. He thought he had that power bomb for the one, two, three, but once the kick out came in, he didn't argue with the ref. He just went straight to his next move, and that's why he is the mastermind. Well, another impressive victory for Jay Sky. But I must say, Dam Damian Gemini had a great performance as well. We certainly haven't seen the last of him. And I know he'll be hitting the gym hard, training for that Young Lions Cup coming in two weeks. right here, Big Soul Hand. It was a last minute substitution from what I understand. And one of the teams. Wrestle last week as uh, together they were not successful. However, they were very, very impressive. But they're taking on a team that includes a true veteran here at WWE Proven Ground, along with uh, a true rookie, um, somebody that's still training at the WWF Wrestling Training Center. It's going to be interesting. Let's see them coming to the ring right now. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this is my first time seeing the DOM and the uh, Alpha Alpha K9 here. DOM, I'm more seeing them as a singles of wrestler. Question. You know, I wasn't here last week. You mean to tell me this guy, this rookie in the here in this ring, held a win over our champion? He did indeed. No way! Ray the Brute Elliot, a student still here at the Pro Wrestling Training Center, answered the open challenge by Rich Portiella and ended up beating him by disqualification. Okay, it was a reverse decision. Oh, reverse decision. By Rick Thames due to RPA's continued beating on him after the match. But I must say, for somebody that only had three matches under his belt at that time, to be getting in the ring with the Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, Rich Cordiella, well, that's no small feat, my friend. Well, I think he was just getting a little bit of after school, you know, after school working, a little training by our champion. As we got insane John Strange, I'm a little worried of what his influence will be on the Brute. Well, I'll tell you, the Brute, Mr. Elliott, he stepped right in again today as John Strange's normal tag team partner, Christian Mills. Beautiful drop kick. Christian Mills was not able to be here tonight. He had a car problem coming to the facility. And I'll tell you, Ray Elliott stepped right in and said, I'll be your tag team partner. There's no fear in this kid at all, despite his lack of experience. I can imagine what kind of strategy meeting these two. Clothesline after clothesline after clothesline after clothesline after clothesline. Look at this offense yeah, come on, from Rep. young Ray Elliott already here. Comes in, misses in the corner. D.O.M. smile. K9 Alpha T with the headbutt brings him down. Nice headbutt by Alpha T. A little cohesion here by D.O.M. and Alpha T. Well, again, these two, they team for the last time last week, but I do understand they've been training together and have been putting things together for a possible run as a full-time tag team here at Proving Ground. Oh, look at that collision. Two big men hitting there in the middle of the ring. Young Ray Elliott went down. And Alpha T picking him up, bringing him into the corner. And Ray Elliott is in trouble right now. That's what I like about Alpha T. He's, he's bare bones. He's right there. He just uses oh, that power. Football stance. Football stance into the shoulder tackle in the corner. Make Let's it. see what these guys can do as a tag team, Big Slow Hand. With so this opportunity. Far. Looks up. Belly, huge belly to belly suplex. My God. About shook the whole building here. I'm a little shaker not up here in the Eagle's Nest. One thing about the. You could hear that. About wow. K9, too. He keeps his eye on Insane John Streets, making sure he's not getting inside that ring. So that way he can isolate the opponent and a nice tag there to DOM. These guys do have the. They have their game plan down. Look at this, John Davis. Oh! Nice, nice, nice tag team work there. Goes for the pin, but Ray Elliott kicks out. Again, this young man, this is only now his fifth match as a professional wrestler. Still technically a student, but somebody that comes here to prove around every week and is willing to step in and take any opportunity he possibly can. Yeah, but he, right now he's getting a, well, he's fighting that suplex against he DOM, is. who was very close to winning the Florida Heritage Championship just a couple weeks back. I was very proud in his performance against Sideshow. Oh, look at that giant right fist. Brought Ray Elliott down hard, two count only. I'll tell you, the DM, I'll tell you, I was a little surprised that DOM decided to start teaming up with K9 Alpha T because he's somebody that said that, he's told me in the back that he is a loner, he's all about himself, but obviously he saw something in K9 Alpha T and said, hey, this is somebody that can help me really go further here in WWN Proving Ground. We're gonna see exactly what Alpha T can do here. He goes to the road, comes out, misses that flying shoulder block, my God. 
He could be taking a trip to the emergency room after this match after so. missing that move. I think he was trying to use a little too much agility on that one. He needs to keep it grounded, especially against a young rookie. In it's fact, it. the brute right now might be getting close to No, he a rookie mistake staying in he the ring. He needs to make that tag. What's he doing? He needs to make that tag. Are you kidding? What is he waiting? No, wait a minute. DOM doesn't want to get in the ring with him. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think there's a little miscommunication on that. What's going on here between the DOM and Alpha T? Oh, right there. Look at that. Big mistake from the team of the DOM and Alpha T. That miscommunication gave Rick oh, Ray Elliott too much time. Oh, and Big Ray makes the tag. Do it, St. John Smith comes in clothesline. Clothesline takes him down. Comes in side slam by John Strange. On uh, one, well, goes up, brings him up into a power slam by John Strange to the DOM. Oh, no. You do not want to be in there against the veteran John of the ring Strange. and a veteran of the insane He's asylum. He's in. Oh, oh, oh my God, he slams Big Ray right down onto K-9. Alpha T, here comes with the flying elbow. One, two, and that is it. John Brown. Before and I'll say it again. I think that's the first time I've seen Insane John Strange use a springboard elbow for a victory. You never know what John Strange is gonna pull out. And what a victory for Insane John Strange and the group. Ray Ellie, his second win in a row Ray here on Ellie. WWF program. Wait a minute, I think, I think we might be seeing a little bit of dissension here in the top. Um yeah. DON just left Alpha T there in the middle of the ring. Well, it's always better to collect money on your own, Sean Davis. <laughs> uh, that tag team might have been very short-lived here in WWE Improvement Ground. I'll have to follow up on that yeah, a little bit later. You know, when I first came to Proving Grounds, I was promised a single spot, but that didn't happen. I got put into a tag team, and you know, I finally, finally got this singles push. And then Alpha T comes in. He says, I want to be a part of the Heaters Lounge. I want a team with the DOM. And he blew it. So I give him a second chance. Time number two. What does he do tonight? He blows it again. You know what? I'm through with Alpha T. Alpha T is nothing because I am going to rise to the top. Oh, yes, the DOM. The CEO of the Hitters Lounge is going to be the best singles competitor at Proving Grounds all day. Man, what you want, man? Duh! What are you talking about, what bro? You mean what, what I'm are you talking, talking about? about? What do you mean what I'm talking You're about? You're supposed to be a team, you bro. Lost. What are you talking you about? How you lost. Say that? I, you, you lost. You lost. You lost. I lost. You lost the first time. ever at such a young age. He's one of the greatest champions ever at such a young age. Now he's going to make his foray into the top world. He's going to take down Donahue, Oprah, Jerry Springer, rest in peace. He's going to take them all down with Richie's way. Yeah, apparently he grew up watching the likes of Geraldo and Sarah, Sarah Jesse Rapdillo, or whatever the heck her name was. They hear he is Rich Portiel. Uh, if I'm Drew Barrymore, I, I put in my resignation right now. Oh, he's got Catalina Perez with oh, him, too. Oh, very beautiful Catalina Perez. Oh, apparently he doesn't like the way his uh, set was set up here. Oh, set, sorry. No pun intended. Oh! He already dropped his sign. 
Well, you, you know, you gotta get, it's hard to find good help nowadays out there. You know, you, get, you gotta get some top of the line to make sure, because this is a oh. top of the line shot. Oh, this is a waste of... Right, you gotta do it yourself. Amen, our, Mr. RPA. Amen. Listen, 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 listen. You can say everything that you want to say, but it ain't gonna change the fact You tell the fans are really here. thrilled about this, Vic Florand. These, these fans the don't know culture. People are here to see Richie's way. That's right. So look, 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 look. The people that don't want to listen to me, guess what? They're going to have to listen anyway. <laughs> so let's get straight to it. I'm going to call out my guest at this time. Later on tonight, he is going to have a match and fight for the Cruiserweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Starling. Oh, fantastic. What a great guest. You know, this is better than any carpool karaoke you can have. Oh, I can tell. This, this is, this is already obnoxious, Vic Slowhead. Now we're going to have to deal with Daniel Starling as well here. Oh, come on. The, the uncrowned cruiserweight champion. Well, he's a former cruiserweight champion. He lost the belt to Scyther, and then he lost in the rematch. How is Scyther doing, is. by the way? <laughs> Oh, you, you know what? He's going to be here tonight to compete. I can tell you that much. All right, uh, Mr. Starley, thank you for being here in Richie's way. And before we get to it, what I need you to do is pay no mind to these nasty people. Oh, come on. Don't insult the fans here in Newport question. Richie here the at the Pro Wrestling tra Training Center. This is ridiculous. You, look, Will you let the man talk? The last few weeks. Listen, listen, when I got the mic in my hand, you shut up. Oh, now see, he's insulting our fans here, Big Boy. Rick Boyle just told you, when he has the mic in your hand, you shut up. I'm still going to be here, and I have the mic in my hand. So, bye, 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 How rude, Big Boy. How rude this man is. I don't care if they paid for this time or not. This is ridiculous. The last few weeks, it has not been looking good for me. Well, he's telling the truth right, there. Be it has not been looking good for you. A few weeks ago, you lost the cruiserweight title. Oh, wow. I, I'm, I'm still shocked by that. Then, That's the truth. You, you know, you've been going a little down here. You've been going. You've been having a little bad streak. Wow, right, I can't believe he's actually telling the truth here for what? once. Big Flo and. What? No, don't listen. Don't listen. My opinion, I think that you are a great wrestler. Yes. I think well, what happened to you is a crime, and I think you deserve to be cruiserweight champion. That's the truth so right there. Oh, I don't know about that. Up against that bomb cider, and you are going to take, I think that you are going to take the title back to where it belongs. But from your first encounter with him, do you have a backup plan? Do you have a blueprint? To beat him this time. Richie, if you don't mind me kicking the microphone. Please. May I be a little bit more comfortable this way? This whole expression, a broken clock is right twice a day. I lost the Scyther two times. <laughs> that means his luck ran out. Because I am the greatest cruiserweight yes. champion on God's earth today. Yes, there is a man, woman, or child. I'm the greatest wrestler in this locker room, respectfully. Oh, Lord. And in any other. It's so the truth. Cider, it won't be an issue. Wow. No. Look, what, I, what you did right now after those very, very exciting words, you got me excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to this match now. And you know what? I think that everything is going to go great for you tonight. I think that everything is going to be in your favor. And everybody, you are looking at the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion. So you know what? So you can get ready for your match later. Let's just leave now and leave these nasty people where they belong right out. All right, these guys, come on, let's get out. You know what I like about this show? Rich Cordayella, he has the charm of a Jimmy Fallon and the investigative recording of a Mike Wallace. What a what fantastic a, show. What a waste of time, in my opinion, Vic Oh man, give me a break. I really hope Rick Thames can do something about making sure this doesn't happen every single week here, because honestly, I'm a little sick to my stomach I hope after it that one. twice a week.
Xavier barely really from any of that offense. Oh, a drop down. Oh, he trips him. Ah, hey, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Oh, and a boot right to the face by Drake Xavier. He's got to follow it up. He's got to go for that cover. He's got to try to the win real quick. Come on, little Jay. There you go. Listen, you can't say come on, little Jay. You got to be, you know what, maybe I'm, you know what, I'm a little biased here, Sly Side, because I've had my fair share of run-ins with Drake Xavier, and I'm honestly not his biggest fan. Chunkus is group for the underdog here. Not for nothing, I'm not his biggest fan either, but in this scenario, I think he's going to take it tonight. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, a little nonchalant pen by Drake Xavier. I don't think he's going to take him out that way. But he's small. He can do whatever he wants. Showing that clearly here, manhandling little Jay. Oh, and a knife edge chop in the corner. You can hear that all throughout the WWN training center. I think he's going to try, oh, now he's hammering it forwards. And he's got to lay those in if he wants to take out little Jay. Oh, we've seen this before. Oh, no. Oh, man. What does he call that again, Sly Sai? Uh, you know, I don't really know, but it's impressive. It is. Probably the only thing. A two count. Little Jay is trying to fire these people up, trying to fire himself up, trying to get himself back into this matchup. Forget the people. The about the people. I think little Jay does here. They're, they're giving that that drive, that, 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 you know, that want to win. Ah, that's a bunch of hogwash if you ask me. Ah, hogwash. You would know, wouldn't you? What is that supposed to be? Oh, you know. Oh, look at this butt wrench. Wow, look at that power by Drake Xavier. What a delivery. Cover. Doesn't hook the leg, though. That's a kick out. I don't know much about little Jay, but one thing I do know is that he might be small, but he he's like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's Drake Xavier going for here? He's 
wasting time. He needs to capitalize. Uh oh, springboard off the top. He lands on his feet. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, and he kneels on him. Watch disrespect. Uh oh. Oh, he moved out of the way. Just barely getting out of the way. That was a big mistake. Oh, Lil J is on his feet. He is ready to go. He's hammering on Trey Xavier. Here. How can you tell he's on his feet? Oh, what? Oh, what a close line. And another one. Lil J's rock and rolling here. Trey Xavier in big trouble. Oh, and a third one. He's wasting his time, though. Oh, and a leg drop. J, I think he's got it right where he wants him. Fire is carry. Whoa, power by the little man. Oh, 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 and elbows by Drake Xavier. Schoolboy, one, two, oh, and three, and he has the pipe. Oh, come on. Drake Xavier stole that one. Drake You claim there was a pull of the tights. I saw nothing from my vantage point. But what I do see is a victorious Drake Xavier standing atop. Uh, I think you need to get your eyes checked, slide side. Well, my work here is done. I know you have a busy night tonight. With the set, I'm gonna go take off and try to get some money out of Rick Zane. That's right, tonight's six man town. I'm out of here. Wait a minute, my work here isn't done. There seems to be more going on. You know, dragging me back to the booth, Sly Sai. What's oh, going on here? You, you want to get paid, too? Oh. They're not done yet. They want to keep fighting. Oh, no. Oh, I know what's coming. Oh, oh, and a counter. Oh, oh! Little Jay. Fireman's carry. Now we have Drake Xavier. Out of nowhere. Wow. Great Xavier with the victory, but a little worse for wear. Yeah, now. Jay said it packing. A man after my own heart with that maneuver. All right, I'm gonna try this again. I gotta go get paid, and you have a match tonight. I Who wish you good luck, but I really don't care. to do. I don't know where you went, Sean Davis. I had very important business. I see last week I was part of the uh I was part of St. Martin, you know, I was a guest of their honor for about a week. Misunderstanding. Oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I got up to, to get something and all of a sudden it seems like we missed the match and here we are again though. Well, but anyways I heard we, we missed a heck of a match but it was, hey, the better one's coming up, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm ready for this one. Finally. Big time grudge match. You know, I don't mind that. Fly, Sly, Zach Sterling guy. Oh, that guy's annoying. That guy's even more annoying than you, Big Slow Hand. I think he should. And I didn't think that was possible. You know, I think if we were together as a team, it'd be like Bobby the Brain Heenan and Luscious Johnny Valent when they, when they ran prime time wrestling. I don't know about that. But here he comes. Now, this is going to be a barn burner, Big Slow Hand. These two start out as tag team partners, and they just do not like each other one bit. Nope, and they have been fighting everywhere. Neither one of these guys are exactly fan favorites here at WWM Proving Ground, but it seems like the fans are starting to take a liking to Krieger. Uh, Which I gotta admit, the man is impressive, Big Slow Man. Well, he locks on that iron claw and it, it's lights out. He's certainly impressive with that iron claw. I'm a little worried though that the, the fans seem to be starting to sink into his ears, you know. Again, when you have a good manager, a good leader in there to, to steer him away and keep him on the straight and narrow, keep him on the path of success. And tonight he needs to be because awesome Adam Vale over on the other end, he's ready to tear somebody up. Well, Krieger 
I don't know, man. I think the fans are starting to like him, and maybe Krieger is starting to like the, the sounds of the cheers of the fans. Yeah, I'm starting to get a queasy feeling in my stomach about that. All I know is I guarantee there will be no difference in the straightforward attack of the German Madman Krieger. Nope, you're gonna see a lot of punches, a lot of bombs, and the Iron Claw, that is always, always dangerous by Krieger. But look at that nice waist lock there by the awesome. I like how he slid right back in the back. That was, that was a nice, that was a nice, a nice pure wrestling maneuver by awesome Adam Vale. Let's see if the scientific wrestling continues here. I don't think so, Big Sloan. I think this is gonna break down to a brawl pretty fast. I'm surprised. As much as these two do not like each other. Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't broken down already. Collar and elbow tie up, wow. I mean, part of it is a rivalry because you have pride on the line. And of course, you got money too here at Proving Ground. But I mean, no these, about that. these two have a lot of hatred, a lot of heat towards each other. And Vail right now looking to try to get the better of that collar and elbow. Well, they're extremely evenly matched, these two. And then they're just locked here like two bulls taking on each other. Yeah, I don't think the ref can get this and get this situated. They are just locked in. They could be like this the whole match. The two are like two bruising bulls, like you said, in the ring. Oh, Adam Vale with the cheap shot there rather than the, the clean break. Krieger with the belly to belly suplex. Gorgeous maneuver. Follows it up with a giant elbow drop. And Krieger right away is in big time control of this match. Going to the top rope. Comes down, oh, nails Adam Vale. And I'm wondering, it could be claw time coming up mighty quick here, Vic Sloan. He's, show, he's, he's showing, showing it. He's showing it. He goes for it. And Adam Vale wisely makes the awesome decision to break up the action a little bit there. And it looks like the fans have been getting oh, it. Hey, got him. Get off his awesome hair. Come on, ref, stop this. Get, oh, good shot by Adam Bale. Looks like, oh, we're gonna be going outside the ring, Sean Davis. Well, things are breaking down already here, Big Sloan. I knew it wouldn't take long. Things are getting out of control here. Oh, look at them just biting and bashing each other. I'll tell you though, that was no oh. good by Krieger pulling awesome out of that, that big right by Krieger. Krieger sends Vale into the ring. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't want this to end on the outside. He wants to punish Adam Vale a little bit here. Here he comes up, but Adam Vale close lines Krieger on the top rope. There we go, using that neck on that top rope, cutting out on oxygen, and then using the knees. I'll tell you this, I don't know if there's anybody better in Proving Ground that can use elbows and knees like awesome Adam Vale. And Adam Vale impressive. does have a slight height advantage over Krieger, and he's using that to his advantage there, but what is he setting up right now, Big Slow, and what is Adam Vale doing? This looks like it could be... It's a little risky, but be, he's got him zoned in. It's definitely a risky maneuver. Comes down with that elbow. On the back of the neck of Krieger. Beautiful, beautiful by awesome Adam Vale. And now going for the cover, this could be it right here. Mistake, mistake there right now. The arrogant cover, honestly, if he had hooked the leg, this might have been over a bit slowly. Yeah, maybe, but he was looking to hook in both those arms. I like that idea. But now he's keeping up on his opponent, and that's what you need to do. You need to be aggressive. You need to be assertive in professional wrestling. And Adam Vale has those twos. And Krieger right now, he is gasping for breath big time. He certainly is. This is a move we've seen Adam Vale use before. It really could be a wear down move or a submission move, depending on how tight he has it locked on. But Krieger, you can tell he is not, I don't think it's under the chin. I don't think it's a choke or the referee will break it up. But Krieger is fighting back. Oh, and Adam Vale brings him right over into a version of a suplex. And wow, he nailed him with that big slow hand. Tip for tat on there, an answer to Krieger's suplex oh, earlier. And then the deep hook of the leg. I think he learned from his first pin attempt there. Absol say absolutely going right back to that hold too. He's going, knocking in on that stomach and back to that hold. He's going for it again. Could he turn this into another suplex maneuver? 
That was a gorgeous move, or should I say it was an awesome was maneuver right awesome there. Maneuver. Are the fans cheering for Kraken? They certainly are, the fans here at the WWF Pro Wrestling Training Center, definitely getting behind the German madman. Krieger reverses it. Hangman neckbreaker by Krieger. Now he goes for the pin. Could this be over? No, Adam Hill kicks out. Wow, what a match we have going on here tonight. It has definitely been back and forth, and it has a lot more maneuvers than I've and I guess I would have been seen from these two. It is not turning. Oh, into a big comes in cross. running. It comes running in like a freight train with that clothesline, then follows it up with that giant boot, bringing Adam Vale down. Krieger hits the rope. He's coming out, but Adam Vale low balls him there on the rope. Krieger hits the floor hard. Very instinctive by awesome Adam Vale. He looked like he was on Dream Street. He was able to pull the rope. Oh, and Adam Vale over the top rope on Krieger. Wow, things have truly gone into the danger zone right now on the outside of the ring where anything can happen, Vic Slohan. This match has got it all. I love it. Awesome Adam Vale going to the skies, doing whatever he can, whatever it takes. Are these both out are they out right now? Are these both out right now? It looks like they are. They're in big trouble. I'm wondering if, if these guys are going to be able to make it back in the ring. Well, they are fighting right now outside. They need to get back in the ring. This fight's out of control here. This is more of what I thought this match was going to be. Like, Krieger goes for the claw on the outside, but Adam Vale blocks him. What's he doing? He has Krieger up on his shoulders, but Krieger is fighting back. Krieger's in the ring. Here comes up, but wait a minute. No, Adam Vale brings him out again. Apparently, these guys... Say that's oh, brings Krieger into the corner. Beautiful maneuver by Vale. Not only that, he brings Krieger out that breaks the count. Very smart on the on behalf of awesome Adam Vale. Krieger, though, comes back in with that axe handle. And, and is that a sleeper hold now I'm seeing? Now Krieger's got the sleeper hold on. I don't know, that kind of looks like a dicey sleeper hold. That looks like that could be some choking. What is going on here? Adam Vale trying to make his way back in the ring with Krieger. Krieger has him in the sleeper, but no. Now Adam Vale is back on the outside. Whoa, I think, uh, yeah, the referee just reached the count. The 10 count, it looks like both men were counted out of the ring. Let's they see. were both trying to make it back in. Oh, wait a minute, I think the rep is giving the victory oh, to awesome Adam Vale. Adam Vale gets the win. Wow, Krieger is living right now. So you believe he was just robbed in this match. I think what happened was Krieger was so intent on that sleeper hold, he did not find the patient in the ring, did not see his timing. Adam Bell, he looked like he was out on his feet. It almost looked like he rolled Oh, the ring. Krieger's not oh. Krieger locks on the iron claw on the outside of the ring on awesome Adam Bell. I guess it doesn't matter if Adam Bell won the match. Krieger is not finished with him at all. We might need to get some help out here, Big Slow Hand, to break so. things up. I looking over it. If Adam Bell wasn't out, net, wasn't out back then, he's probably out now. Things have just finally gotten settled down between Krieger and Awesome Adam Bale. Things were out of control there. But Vic Slowly, I mean, what a match we've got coming up here. An eight-man tag team match on a play, man. Get that straight this time, that straight, that's tired. 
tag team here, and man, an eight-man tag team that is going to be exciting, Big Slow Hand. Better, better together, together. 
with their signature move, their bastard in the rear. It comes in with a clothesline down. Go for the pin, two count only. Zakira seems to get out of there right now and make a tag desperately. Zakiris, and he will Zakiris, Zakiris, Zacharias. We'll get it right one of these days once he figures out. I mean, last week it was a lot easier because he was simply New Ori. Okay, now who is this guy here? Hans Kemper. I, this is the first time I've seen this young gentleman in the ring. Hans Kemper made his debut last week in impressive fashion, but here with his, oh, his cousins, but right there, close like it's stopped by Nick Stevens. Brings Hans Kemper down. Young man, only 18 years of age. Made his United States debut last week. No kidding. He comes from the country of Chile. Chile. That's what I said, Chile. Oh. You sure it's not Chile? No, no, Chile. Well, you know what's Chile? Even better, better together right now. It's Hato Horvitz taking out Kemper in the corner. I'll tell you, Kemper's gonna get a pretty rude awakening here tonight if he doesn't get out of that corner. And I'm impressed with Nick Stevens so far. Yeah, Nick Stevens, this kid is the real deal, obviously. I wonder if Hadar will consider replacing Andrew New Ori Mitchell with possibly Nick New Ori Stevens. Why would you ever replace New Ori? I mean, New Ori is just... Well, why would you ever replace Ori in the first place? I mean, I mean, Ori's gonna be... Ori Gold's gonna be back eventually here. I mean, I think. I don't know. I, you know what? We're moving along. It's New Ori out there in a beautiful and vicious suplex to Kemper. And I'll tell you, this kid is in a lot of pain. Well, I must say, Andrew Mitchell, since becoming New Ori Mitchell, I think I've got that right, it's has become a much more aggressive wrestler here at WWN Proving Ground. And this, this gentleman right here impresses me every week, Zakyrus. Well, Zakyrus, look at the agility of this big man. I mean, this is not a small dude, but he can move around the ring like somebody 100 pounds less than him. Wow, it's impressive. It is impressive. I enjoy watching him every week. And right now, I'm certainly enjoying watching the new blood here, Nick Stevens. Nick Stevens in the right, ring he's here. Type of wrestler. Mr. Rock and Roll, Nick Stevens. I know he reminds me of that Skid Row concert I went to a couple weeks ago. Wait, you went to a Skid Row concert? Yeah, okay. All right. I mean, some people said I went to Skid Row, but that that don't believe that hype. Don't okay. believe the haters. Here comes Zakiras again. Here has that foot right on the throat of Hans Kampfer. Yeah, I like that. Not only using the aerial. Kampfer's in but... bad shape right now. He needs to get out of there. This yeah. young this young man is in a lot of trouble right now. Big slow hand. You say I'm not sure. You know, if he's been beaten up like this in Chile, but right now here in Newport Riche, he is getting beaten up so hard. Well, I, from what I understand, the competition is fierce in Chile, but nowhere near as fierce as here. At WWF Proving Ground, we have wrestlers all over the world. Hayda Horvitz from Israel. Andrew Mitchell from some ranch right? somewhere. No, New Ori is not from Israel. He's from Montana or something. Hans Kemper makes the tag to Ari's Perez comes in. Wow, comes in hard, taking down New Ori, took down Hadar, but now that he's fighting back. Ari's hooks him up, brings him, no, Hadar stops him. Oh, great tag team wrestling right there. Go oh, for a double suplex, but no, it looks like Vaster is in. He stops him, and now Zakiris is in. Is this a, what the heck is going on, Big Slow Hand? Uh, I think we got ourselves a little meeting of the minds with everybody. I don't think I've ever seen there. anything like this before, Big Slow Hand. Are you kidding me? Wait, 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 we got a huge power struggle. What combo suplex, my God! I have never seen that before in all my years of wrestling, Big Slow and Wow, that was impressive. What a match we've done here tonight, here at WWE Improving Grounds Mega Brawl. Wow! How is the ring still up? I'm not sure, but it looks like right now RB Unique, Kemper, uh, and... Oh, and the Kick. Wow! We are seeing all kinds of innovation in this match, Big Slow Hand. Oh, Andrew Mitchell is taking it hard in the middle of the ring. Goes for the pin, two, and three. What a match, what a match, what a match. Best
Sean Davis. Oh, and this 
match is underway already here. Doesn't he tax him before the bell? What kind well, of after what Starlin did last week to him, he has every right to start the match off hot here. And Scyther wants to put away Daniel Starlin as fast as he can. Cross body goes for the bit two count only. Has the bell even rung yet? I believe the bell, I'm not sure, but this match is underway officially. And it's all Scyther so far here. Here he goes, Scyther hits the ropes, comes up, misses that moonsault off the second rope. He baited him in, he catfished him into that ring. Nice. And now look at this, Starling going straight for the Hangman Nakebreaker. Hangman Nakebreaker on the already injured neck of Scyther. Going for the pin, did not, did not hook the leg. No, because he... And now look at this choke mix slow in. The blatant choke right in front of the referee. If the referee won, and he could disqualify him right here. And Daniel Stark will lose his chance at the Cruiserweight Championship. The referee did not disqualify him, and I think Daniel Starlin may have been just trying to rearrange Scyther's neck, you know, trying to make it a little better. Oh, yeah, is, is it working? Because he's just that that kind of a nice guy, right, Big Slow in. Look at these little rabbit punches by Daniel Starling. You don't know the imperceptible one like I know the imperceptible one. Starling sends Scyther into the corner. Oh, I have never seen him so focused, so destructive. Daniel Starling. Oh, just rubbing the face of Scyther on the top rope. Slams him head first into that corner. This man Daniel knows 5,000 wrestling maneuvers, but tonight he's just going to brawl with Scyther. He's going to take... Wait, wait, what's going on here? Scyther's fighting back, and I don't know about 5,000, big slow hand. Maybe 20 or 30, but come on, 5,000? Hey, I, I and again, it. right back to the choke. Cold. For somebody that knows 5,000 moves, why the heck is he resorting to blatant choking? Because he can, because he's been putting up with this idea uh, that Scyther's that been ACW Cruiser. Yes. And you know what? He's got every right. He's just been putting up with the misery of Scyther with that ACW Cruiserweight Championship. Well, you know what? If Daniel Starling wasn't so darn arrogant, if he wasn't so conceited, maybe he would still be the cruiserweight champion right now. Uh, I, I blame the commissioner. The commissioner has set this in motion. In fact, I blame the commissioner for the pain that Scyther is going through right now. Look at the look at the grimace on his face, Sean Davis. <laughs> I don't know what McDonald's has to do with this, but Scyther is fighting right back. Here he goes and start. Oh, and look at that chop. Took Daniel Starlin right off his feet. Starlin hits the ropes, comes up, and hot shot on the top rope. Shades of hot stuff. Eddie Gilbert right there by Daniel Starling. And Scyther is hurt right now, Big Slow. And this could be over. Two, oh no. He somehow kicked out, but Scyther with the already injured neck, and then that vicious hot shot on the top rope. I truly thought this match was gonna be over right there, Big Slow. Oh, absolutely, I thought so too. Look at him. Every ounce of his energy just throwing into that Irish whip on Scyther. And Scyther's just in a lot of pain, no matter, even if he gets on offense, he can only get a move or two done. Daniel Starlin is in complete control tonight. Whips him in the corner again with every ounce of strength in his body. Daniel Starling, I'm telling you, when he is on top of the match, he is relentless. He is absolutely, he's measuring up now. But oh, but Scyther caught him. Let's see how he can follow it up. He's climbing to the second rope. Oh, he's a hooks him, hooks him, comes out. No, going for that rolling DDT. Starling stopped him. Boots him in the corner. No! He's, he's setting him up for the pile driver. If he hits the pile driver, this is over, Vic Slohan. No, Scyther blocks it. Goes for it. Scyther blocks it again. It counters with a backdrop, bringing Daniel Starling down hard. His lower back is gonna be in pain now. Say, are you kidding me? Scyther able to deliver that backdrop. That's, that's insane. Look at the weight Scyther is right now. He can barely get up on his feet. Scyther getting himself set. What's he gonna follow? Comes in. Nails Daniel Sterling down a second time. A third time. And 
Daniel Starling is rocking right here at the hands of the champion, Scyther. Scyther sets it up, come running in. The rolling attack to the stomach, but no, he hurt his own head there, his own neck. Still was able to follow up with the Enzo Gurry. Flipped Daniel Starlin straight over. Scyther goes for the pin too, but no! Daniel Starlin manages to get his foot on the bottom rope, breaking up the count and saving himself from being defeated in this match. You know, Rich Portaiello asked about it earlier. It's like, what is the backup plan for you, Daniel Starlin? What are you gonna be able to do if things are not going your way? Or we're gonna have to find out because right now Scyther is in absolute control. He is, but Starling. He counters, he's calling for the figure four leg lock, but no, Scyther is able to pull him out of there. Looked like a little bit of a hand yeah, a there, bit but, hair but Starling going right back. Can he lock it in? Can he, yes! Daniel Starling locks in the figure four leg lock, and this could be over the most painful Submission hold in professional wrestling unless Scyther can counter the move. But wait a minute, who just came? Is that, is that Catalina Perez? That is Catalina Perez right down there to send her. Once again, what is Catalina Perez doing here? Scyther managed to reverse the move. But no, wait a minute, was that Francisco Piazza? The Godfather was sending his support over to Daniel was that Sterling. What is going on here? What is. Oh, wait a minute. Starling just used. Whatever that foreign object was, he just that used was, it. See, that was his right fist that he used. It was the a referee short. didn't see it because Catalina Perez. No, are you giving no. 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 From the set again, are we ever gonna find out what the relationship is between the set and Daniel Starr? And what mutual, is going on here? It's mutual admiration and Saito though he battled valiantly, passed out from that figure four leg lock. Everybody saw that. Well, everybody saw that Francisco Chiazzo handed a foreign object to Daniel Starling. Any which way, we have a new ACW Cruiserweight Champion. For the second time, the champion is Daniel Starling. Big, one of the big ones here tonight, Big Slow Hand. The loser leaves town match. Whoever loses this match, literally, they signed binding contracts. They can never wrestle here at WWF Proven Ground again. I mean, the huge stakes in this match. Huge Absolutely. Stakes. I mean, we're talking career trajectories here. This could be it for Jonathan Hudson, man. It also could be it for star of the show, Andy Mack. Well, we Okay, there he is, Jonathan Hudson. Technically speaking, you're right. This could be it for the star of the show. But as you can see, the Alpha Daddy hurt, beat up, banged up, and I see this wonderful career here at WWN Proving Ground is coming to Well, I gotta end. hand it to Jonathan Hudson to even take on this match, to sign that contract, knowing that he has an injured knee from the attack that happened last week. Um, I mean, this is so dangerous for Wait a minute, what's happening? What is Steven Frick doing out here? I think he's gonna be an enforcer, Mr. Steven Frick, Frick is out here, but wait a minute. No, Rick Fabes is here. Commissioner Rick Fabes is out here. And he's saying, 
forget about it, Steve and Rick. You gotta get out of here right now. Commissioner Rick thinks you weren't here, but he came out last week and right here in this booth. He told me from now on he was gonna be a hands-on commissioner. He was gonna take things on himself to make sure that the rules are enforced here at WWE Proving Ground. He can't do that. Well, he's doing it right now. Commissioner Rick Thames getting Stephen Fring out of here. Right, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? Wait a minute. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm trying to get a hug. Said, turn around. Turn around. Andy Mack. How did he get under the ring? I, I don't know. Apparently, Andy Mack was hiding under the ring. But wait a minute. We saw him earlier in the show. How did he get under the ring without anybody seeing this? That is the most elusive man in professional wrestling and also Yeah, Yeah, I was going to say, elusive to the <laughs> law, too. That he still has a warrant out for his arrest for carjacking the, the car of Ray Elliott and then taking off to Tijuana, Mexico oh, a few weeks ago. You know, sometimes rookies have got to sacrifice in this sport, and Ray Elliott had to sacrifice his car for the greater good. And right now, the star of the show, Andy Mack, ripping at the patella of the Alpha Daddy, Jonathan Hudson. <laughs> Andy Mack on the attack here. And man, I am sorry, but things do not look good for Jonathan Hudson our former WWM Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, and Andy Man, no, I don't think so. I don't care how hurt Hudson is right now on his knee, you're not gonna pin him in this situation. It's just a matter of time. You might as well start rolling graphics on the career achievements of Jonathan Hudson, his 16 years in the professional wrestling business, and now he's gonna have to find another line of work. Well, I, I don't count Jonathan Hudson out yet, but I'll tell you, whoa, right there, elbow to Andy Mack. A knee injury is so dangerous for someone's career, for any athlete, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, especially here in professional wrestling. Oh my God. And especially in, the, in Jonathan Hudson's case, because I'll tell you, this guy attacks from all different kinds of angles. He doesn't, you can come at you straight forward, they come at the side, diagonal, what have you. And Andy Mack, so wisely, just dropping those elbows on Jonathan Hudson in that knee. Well, Andy Mack, has a game plan in this match that he's sticking to. Does the commissioner have some business to do or something? No, like Commissioner that? Rick Thames is out there to make sure that Mr. Steven Frick doesn't interfere in this match and that it is so much on the line in this match. So much here that basically the Caribbe, Jonathan Hudson fighting back. Andy Mack has raised the ire of the former champion, and that is not a smart move, my friend. Did he say something about his wife? Because that's not smart. That's not smart at all. And Hudson is on the attack. Bad knee or not? Oh, no. His knee just gave out un from under him. My gosh. Jonathan Hudson is in rough shape right now, Vic Slowman. Yeah, like, I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to continue like this. It's like watching Tom Brady against the Dallas Cowboys. You know, he had a great run, but it's coming to an end. And look at that. This is it right here, Sean Davis. This is the end of Jonathan Hudson and Proving Ground. And I'll tell you, I think the commission needs to put his hat back on. He needs to watch this match. I, I think I see Hudson. Did he say I quit? He did not say I quit at all. But Andy Mack just wrenching away that wait a minute uh emt dave acres is down here and is telling rick commissioner rick thames something i'm not sure what's going on he's pulling rick thames away from ringside as andy mack continues to wrench away with that deep deep toe hold on jonathan hudson well the hudson's fighting back and he's slamming the head of andy mack into the canvas here my god Jonathan Hudson is not done yet, Vic Slohan. Not by any means, not by any measure. No, Stephen Frick's out here. Stephen Frick's out here. Mr. Stephen Frick, and I'll tell you, Andy Mack. But here comes oh, Rick Thames. Here comes Rick Thames. Rick Thames is back. He pulled Stephen Frick down. I can't believe he put his hands on a pro. Andy Mack is back, though. He kicks Hudson. He's going back for the left dragon. Screw on the knee. Oh my God, that, that knee, that something's gonna be dislocated. Something, oh! Andy Mack with a sliding kick to Rick Thames. Andy Mack just attacked Commissioner Rick Thames. 
Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Hey, hey, wait a minute! You better, you better turn around, Mac. You better turn around, start the show. You better be careful. But yeah, I love seeing the Andy commercial. Mac. No, wait a minute. Andy Mac. Andy Mac has his hand taken off by Jonathan Hudson again. Jonathan Hudson is up. Sits back in. Picks him up. Spy Master. Sends him around. Jonathan Hudson. Oh my God! Here goes the referee. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, with everything on the line in this match, I can't believe the referee, Anthony Rivera, was just knocked out, apparently. Hudson has back up, brings him down. Oh no, he's not. And you the referee's what? up there to count the pin. You know, the good thing is that Andy Mack is a referee, so he could be able to referee this match. No, 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 and here comes Steven Frick again. Oh, Steven, Steven Frick is out. Are you kidding me? The referee is down and Steven Frick is back out. Oh, but Hudson catches him, catches him again. And he nails him with a diamond cutter. Steven Frick is out of the ring. Andy Mack is back oh, up. Super kick by Andy Mack. Goes for the pin. No, 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 don't tell me no. No, don't tell me no, 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 no. It's not over yet! Hudson kicks out! What is it gonna take to take down Jonathan Hudson? I can't believe it! Well, obviously it's gonna take more than Steven Frick! It's gonna take more than Andy Mack! Because Jonathan Hudson is a man of the people! He's what many people say is the true proven ground heavyweight champion! And he's defending his very livelihood right here tonight! at WWE well, Proving Grounds, Mega Pro Well, it's about to come to an end because Andy Mack has him sized Oh, no, he goes for the super kick. No, Hudson has him up. He has him up. And brings him down on the knee. On the bad knee. And what's Rick Thames doing? And Rick Thames just pops Andy Mack. Oh, discus for him. Two, no, three. No. Andy Mack is gone from WWE Proving Grounds. is gone. We never have to see him again here at WWF Proving Ground and Jonathan Hudson is Tonight, the best independent professional wrestler on the planet today, Jonathan Hudson, just proved his ground once again. He got rid of that piece of crap, Andy Mack, even with his little help of his little lapdog, Stephen Frick. Now, Stephen Frick, listen to me very carefully. I am not finished with you. You know, they say when God closes a door, he opens another one. Now, God, I'm asking you, Jonathan Hudson's asking you, please, please open that door! Ah! 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 Well, it looks like God just opened that door for you.
with that incredible clothesline. That's what you gotta do. You gotta get back in that ring, put those clotheslines in and try to quiet, quiet this crowd down. Take away the momentum. Well, here's the thing. A clothesline is something we see often in professional wrestling. The fans might not realize how dangerous that move can be when it's hit with that kind of velocity. Yeah, and don't try it at home there, kids. And for all you youngins out there, by the way, we got proven, we're taking in more students at Proving Ground, aren't we? Uh, WWF Training Center. That's right, the WWF Pro Wrestling Training Center. We're always looking for the superstars of tomorrow. Marciano caught Edwards. Backbreaker into a fallaway slam. Hey, heck, this Marciano is really impressing me, Vic Slohan. He's a type wrestler. He's definitely a superstar of tomorrow. But he look at the arrogant him. cover, though. Come on. You can't come in here and take on someone like Trent Edwards in front of his hometown crowd and try to beat him with such an arrogant maneuver. He almost hooked the leg. He was thinking about it. Uh, now he's up there. All the punches are coming down now. Raining down like, well, he had one in. He got one good shot in, now sends Edwards into the corner. Here comes Marciano, but he misses. Edwards out of the way. A clothesline of his own brings Marciano down. A second clothesline. He hooks him. It brings him down hard. Trent Edwards is taking back control of this match. Both men's debut here at WWN Proving Ground. Such an important match in both men's careers. Let's see what's coming up. Can Trent Edwards finish off Marciano? He sets him up, drops him down, goes for the pin, no, two count only. Marciano somehow manages to kick out. Fitz Louis, what a night we've had here at WWN Proving Grounds. Mega Brawl 23 is nowhere near over. We still have the six-man street fight coming up after this match. Absolutely. Now oh, oh, the no. White Tiger with that power bomb. The running leg of No, I thought for sure that was over. Like you said, that running sit-down Liger bomb. I would have guaranteed this match was over, but Trent Edwards showing everything he's got, showing the intestinal fortitude. But now Tom Marciano climbing up, it looks like, to the top rope. You know something like this is a risky, risky move, Vic Slohan. But he hits, he hits the frog splash! And it's over, no, no! Slohan, I thought for sure it was over. He hit that beautiful frog splash from the top he row. Put up through the canvas. How is that not a three count? I am absolutely befuddled in this situation. I am blown away by the competition here at WWF Proving Ground. In particular, two brand new competitors here, Tom Marciano, Trent Edwards, showing what they've got here on a big, big stage at his WWF Proving Ground. Oh, and man, I am in for, wait a minute, what was that? Spear! 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 Spear by Edwards to no. I don't know what the referee was doing right there, but White Tiger got distracted and Trent and Edwards took advantage of it, wisely so. Both guys right now are kind of beaten up. A little hop in the pump, but I'll tell you. What a brutal spear mix for him, but yet he wasn't able to put Marciano away, but here he is on the second rope. Another high-risk maneuver here by Trent Edwards. Comes with the fly and elbow. Hooks him, two, and three. Trent Edwards gets the win. I'll tell you, Sean Davis, back and forth action over and over again. It was that one distraction by Marciano, and Edwards is able to take advantage of it, and he got that victory. What a match, what a match. I am blown away. I am so impressed with both of these men. Two tremendous athletes, Tom Marciano and Trent Edwards. And Trent's asking for the microphone. Trent Edwards probably wants to say something to his friends, his family, and the fans here at the Pro Wrestling, WWF Pro Wrestling Training Center. What a victory for Trent Edwards, man. Why have to listen to this? 
you do. This man has earned the right to say something right now. All right, Trent Edwards, a man of the people, and obviously a man showing his respect to everyone here at WWN Proving Ground. What a win for Trent Edwards, and we still have the huge main event coming up next. We do. I'm blown away by the night that we've had here at WWE Proving Ground. Mega Brawl 2023. And this main event is going to be intense, my friend. Oh, it's going to be intense because this is the playground for the second corporated. A street fight right out there in the street and the gutters in the alleyways. And these guys are going to take it to them. Yeah, but you know what? It wasn't the set that demanded this match. It was their opponent, Benji Neptune, Tito Torres, and Chungus. They're the ones that wanted this match. Well, they're full for the There they are, the set incorporated. This is all about pride. This is all about hate. This is a blood feud here at WWF Proving Ground. The set and Benji Neptune, Tito Torres, and Chungus have been fighting tooth and nail here at WWF Proving Ground. Chungus, Tito Torres, and Benji Neptune demanded this match after things got out of control last week. And this match is now, yeah. Michael James is smart to get out of the way right there. That he is. Oh, look at this. And I don't know why these guys wanted a match like that. Because they are going to get an education right now and a beat down. And Chunk is still in his on. It is on, Big Slow Man. I guarantee there's gonna be no fancy moves in this match. This one is a six-man street fight, and it is going to be a war. Yes, it is, and I'll tell you, I mentioned tonight, we are packed out here at Mega Pro. We actually had to turn people away. So I'll tell you, you need to get down here to Proving Ground. You wanna see this live. Yeah, no doubt. We actually had to turn away from what I understand, over 20 fans that wanted to get in here that weren't able to make it in. We brought in extra chairs, but we just simply ran out of room. But right now, the fight is on. And fans, you at home watching this, you've got the best seat in the house, really. Every week, this is the kind of action you get here at WWF Proving Ground. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube to make sure you never miss a second of the action. Absolutely, and things are gonna be getting bigger and better here on Proving Ground. We got a lot of stuff coming up, but right now, I see a kendo stick being thrown in there. What is Benji Neptune oh, there? Oh, we got some weapons coming in, Big Slow in. Anything goes is, is in this match. You can do anything you want. Two, three. Oh my goodness, a frisbee dump. Kiyasa right now getting beaten by a stick. I don't know if that's a kendo stick or a pool cube. I'm just glad that, I'm just 
glad I'm not in this match. That's, that's uh, one thing I'm glad. I'm gonna steal a turn from the late great Royal Monsoon. I am glad I retired, Vic Slohan. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a little surprising me right now. The set incorporated, the guys who really been the brawlers all throughout this right now, just getting manhandled by these guys. They gotta find a, a way to get the get on the same page, get the game plan going. Oh, the king of the pile drivers. You know the king of the pile drivers. Daniel Sterling now knows how to use a pile driver. I wonder well, about that. I'm kind of interested to know where he learned his techniques, Vic Sloan. Well, you know, if I was to be a pro wrestler, I would try to learn as much as I can from Francisco Chiazzo. Oh, by you, the way, the, the that last move. Yeah, <laughs> the tide has turned here, my friend, here, as the set has taken over in this six-man street fight. I guess they're going to be serving these guys up on a platter. <laughs> Oh, chairs coming into the ring now. Gus De La Vega, he is, oh, that chair to the midsection of Tito Torres. I wouldn't put anything past any of the members of the set, especially in a situation where literally anything goes. There are no rules here. There's gotta be a winner, Big Slowhand. Absolutely, I don't know. Again, I don't know what guys like Tito Torres and Benji Neff the Chungus were thinking. I mean, these are the most dangerous men you can have out there in this kind of match. Uh oh, Chiazzo has a chair. He has a chair. Oh, brings it down on the back of Benji Neptune. And Torres right now being hung on the ropes. He's in oh deep my gosh. Trouble. Nothing to You could literally him. lose your life on a move like that, Big Slow Hand. I don't want to be over dramatic here, but that is a scary, scary situation to be in. Well, you know what? These gentlemen wanted it, and it's about time the set incorporated eliminate these guys from proving ground. They have been a thorn in their side for too long, and as you can tell, who's got all the gold right now? That's right, the set incorporated. You can't, you can't deny the success that the six that the set has had here at WWE Proving Ground and all over the world of professional wrestling. These guys have been traveling all over the country, all over the world, defending their titles. I know they have been sick. They have been laying a uh, trail of carnage all throughout the country, whether it's been Utah, Rhode Island, New York. They're just all over the place. I love it when they come down here to Proving Ground. Oh. Tito Torres took that knee to the stomach, flipped over, and it looked like he landed on his head there. I think so, yeah. This could be it there. The ref count. Meanwhile, though, Benji Neptune getting some shots in on Francisco Chiato. You got Chungus and our champion, our awesome, uh, our awesome talk show host. One of the oh, best in the Annoying court. talk show host, I must say, Big Slowhead. But right now, again, well, Tito Torres looks like he's trying to come back here. Oh, he caught Gus De La Vega with that foreign object, and now Francisco Chiazzo caught it. Might be seeing a comeback here of sorts. Tito Torres with that stick. But Rich Portaiella caught him, caught him off there. I'm oh, sorry, there's so much action going on here tonight, Big Sloan. It's hard to keep up with it all. It's insane out there. Benji Neptune, he looks like he's on Dream Street on that on that canvas. And now what's Gus De La Vega thinking? Huh? Dangerous starts by Gus De La Vega right now. Gus De La right Vega now. setting something up. Has Chungus on the chair. This oh, oh, oh no, you don't wanna you don't wanna attack Chungus in the head, that's for sure. But oh listen to those chops by Chiazzo on uh, Tito Torres in the corner. Oh, drop told into the chair by Chungus onto Gus De La Vega. I'm not sure I've ever seen Chungus perform a drop down toe hold. Never mind in a situation like that. And Benji Neptune has the stick now, using it on Francisco Chiazzo. Man, this match is out of control. This is insane! This is chaos personified right now. Tito Torres with the chair to the midsection of Chiazzo. Now to his back. Not to the tools. Oh, but Rich Boreal making the save. Uh, to the godfather of professional wrestler, Francisco Piazzo, and now Gus De La Vega has that chair on the attack. He nailed Chungus with it. Now is choking out Tito Torres. I think EMT Dave Akers is gonna have a very busy post-match after this situation. Well, multiple men could be going, having to make ER visits after this one. There's no, no, there's no doubt about that, Big Soul Ham. But what's coming up now? The creative mind of Gus De La Vega right now. He's got that chair. Oh! Swung for the 
the fences like Aaron Judge. <laughs> he did. Tito Torres might be singing at a higher level after this one tonight. Tito Torres can sing? Well, I certainly hope he had no plans for later, but we'll, we'll get into that. Right now, it looks like they're going on the attack on Chungus right now. That's what they need to do. They need to isolate it. As chaotic as this has been, you have to have a game plan in this situation. And finally, the San Incorporated has got exactly it's still mine. They, what they are they going to do to Chungus? Oh, my. No. You won't oh, see no, that out of the Neptune making the save. He might have just saved Chungus' chance to have children later in life right now. But uh, I, I don't know if I can go with that. Oh my goodness. They had Chungus where they wanted him, but Benji Neptune able to come in and break it up. This match is just crazy. At this point, there is no strategy. Oh no, what are they doing? Oh, no, no. Now that's where I call hitting him where it hurts right there, big slow hand. There are hundreds of women right now in the New York Metropolitan oh, area. They're what is that? Is that a, what is that? That's oh. the salad. Oh, that's the salad. Thing. Oh. Salad tongues to the crotch by Chungus to the champion, Rich Bordeella. I see the look of distress on his face at Catalina. Oh, Francisco Chiato is in a bad, bad place right now. Discus punched by Benji Neptune. Piazza is down in three. This match is over. I cannot believe this. What a match that was, Big Bullhead. What a night here. At WWF Proving Grounds, Mega Brawl 23, Chungus, Tito Torres, and Benji Neptune are the big winners here in the six-man street fight. Fans, I hope you enjoyed this night of wrestling as much as I have. What a, what a crazy, crazy night it was. We have a new ACW Cruiserweight Champion at Daniel Starling. And we had an amazing night of wrestling action. And we'll have more of it again next week. Fans for Vic Clohan, I'm Sean Davis. And we will see you next week right here at WWN Proving Ground. Now that we took care of business tonight ah. against the Set Incorporated, now it's time for Tag Team Gold. Let them know, Tito. The Wild Side Experience is here to take your gold, Gus and Frankie. We're coming for you with everything we got, whatever it takes. Tell them, Chungus. Oh, Rich Port Ayala. Rich Port Ayala, we've been going at it back and forth twice now. Twice you've met me in that ring and twice you have cheated. And to get that pin, one, two, three, next time, I'm not gonna let it happen. I'm coming for that title. So are these guys right here. We're walking out yes, next sir. week. That's yes, all the gold. Oh yeah, baby! Even the sun shines on a dog's ass every now and again. You boys getting a win over the set incorporated is like putting a silk hat on a pig. But I will take tonight what we did by becoming bigger, better, and stronger. Daniel Starling, newest member, ACW, cruiserweight champion of the, the world. When I tell you I am the greatest professional wrestler under 205 pounds today, respectfully, I mean it. There's not a man, woman, or child that will take this title from my hands. Whether it's today, whether it's next Friday, or whether we're talking a year from now, 10 years from now, whether I'm in the ground, I will be buried with this championship in my hands. Tell me, Gus. Huh. Bigger, stronger, you know it. Tito, Neptune, tonight, you guys got lucky. It's the look on sound of you two. We're tired. You guys won the match next week. You got it. Dile, Richie. That win that you guys got tonight don't mean nothing because we are the set incorporated and we're going to brush that off because we have all the gold. I said it once and I say it again. When you think of the set incorporated, when you think of Castella Vega, when you think of Francisco
Francisco Chiazzo, when you think of Daniel Sterling, and when you think of Rick Sport Ayala, you think of the WWN. We run this all time.